Welcome back, Seaville. We have Laura Reichard in the house mm -hmm. and Collier Lumpkin. Both in the house. Director of the Memory of Water and Assistant Director of Memory of the Water. Memory of the Water. And that's the play that John and I are in. We keep shamelessly promoting on the show. We do. Welcome to the show. Hey, Hi, thanks thank you. for having us. Coming. First of all, thank you so much for casting us in the play. Thank you. We would have thank had it no other way. <laughs> <laughs> So tell us, Laura, tell us a little bit about your background. I know you were in New York City. You're from South Carolina? Yes. You're a South Carolina girl? Yes, I grew up in a very small, small southern town in South Carolina. And then I went to the College of Charleston and got my undergrad degree in theater. Uh -huh. And then I got on the bus and went to New York, um, moved to New York City where I lived for about four, four years. Uh, Sometimes doing theater and sometimes managing a restaurant. Uh, that sounds familiar. <laughs> sure does. And then I came back to South Carolina for a little while, and then I ended up going to Italy and training in Commedia dell'arte, which is Italian mask theater. And then I also went to London and did some training there. And then I came back to New York and continued to work as an actress. And now I'm at UVA uh, finishing up my MFA in acting. Amazing. Wonderful. Was, was uh, New York City an eye-opener? Yeah, yeah. I you, I grew up in New York City. I felt I feel like that yeah. going there right after college, you learn a lot. My, at first, I thought it was easy because I I got a play right away and I did re really well right away, and I was like, oh, this a is piece easy. of cake. Um, and then it got really hard. Then what about then you realize you're only as good as the last play you did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I learned yeah. that too. But but I think everyone should live in New York for at least a year of their life. I think it's an amazing place. I loved it. Do you want to go back? Um, I, I'm I always and sometimes not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it changes by the day, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. When are you going to be doing your MFA? In May, May 22nd. <laughs> wow. And is this the first thing that you're directing at Live Arts? Because I know you've directed in England and New York also, right? Yes. Um, this is the second show I have directed at Live Arts. I co-directed this past summer with Will Rucker a piece called 13, and it was for the um, Live Arts a Youth Ensemble, and that went really well. And so they invited me back to do Memory of Water. I don't Fantastic. blame them. You're awesome to work with. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you're great to work with as well. Before we get into the, uh, the, the Camita dell'arte and the mask mm -hmm. and all that, Collier. Yes, darling. Friend. A friend. <laughs> you're awesome. Tell us about Thank you. you. Um, I am from Virginia, actually. Well, we've been here since I was in the third grade. So I went to the College of William and Mary down the road, so the rival institution. I was not a theater major. I was comparative religion, but I love stories about people and how people make sense out of the world, and that's such a theatrical element to life as well. So <clears throat> I have been back in Charlottesville for the past couple years writing. Um, writing plays and working on a novel and ah. so this is my first chance to work with Laura as a director and we're having a blast. You two are, are such a great team. Yeah. It's like a You're yin just, and a yang. It's like watching <laughs> a Saturday Night Live skit at every single rehearsal. You oh, that's together. good. It's that's a nice way to put it. And then throw in Scott and you guys are oh. just rounded off. Yeah, he's like the, the quiet, he's like the, he's like the quiet, silent partner. Yeah. Do you aspire to direct at all? I'd love to. I. I think I enjoy the writing process a little more. I like the, the character creation and the story creation, but I would love to be a writer-director if possible. Mm -hmm. it's, it's such a neat way to be able to take your words and actually bring them to life. So yeah, I'd love to, and I've been learning so much, so it's been great. She has a great eye. She's a great eye. She's, kind. She's a natural. What, do you mind, can we ask you what your novel's about, or would you have to yeah, tell Yeah, for us? sure. I, um, I took a trip this summer for 108 days and I drove around the entire country, every single state. <clears throat> and I was looking at how food creates and connects communities. And so my novel is a story about, it, it's very much in the eat, pray, love kind of vein, oh. about a woman trying to make sense out of herself through that experience. So it's kind of autobiographical, kind of fiction. So we can never have enough of those because I know. there's just so few, and you know, women need to be represented. Agreed. You know? Agreed. Agreed. As, so, how long did that trip take you? Three months, almost four months, actually. April to August. Fabulous. That's really cool. Twenty-five thousand miles. Can you turn that <laughs> novel into a play for Laura and I to do? Yes, it, I actually already have. <gasps> that one's done. The play Yay. part of it is yeah. done. So I've already you cast myself. You got yourself a lead, my friend. So, what states do you leave out in the play? Oh, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> there's, a, there's big plain states. You can skip those. I mean, you know, Montana. I think that's a brilliant concept for Call Your Do because her personality is such a giver and a healer oh. in itself um, as a person. So I think for her to offer a book wow. that gives that is a 
is exciting. It's been really That's fun. lovely. <clears throat> it's been really fun. Tell us, I tell us how this relationship it. works in the theater world. The uh, the director and assistant oh, director. Yeah. Oh, it can work in all sorts of ways mm -hmm. depending on the dynamic of the team. Um, for example, uh, Daniel Sullivan, who's a very famous New York director, he. Um, he, a couple summers ago, he was directing a Midsummer Night's Dream in Central Park, and he actually fell through the trapdoor of the stage and was hurt very badly at a rehearsal. So he had to use his assistant director and direct from the hospital. Mm. So in that sense, oh your gosh. assistant director really has to step up and be the director. Um, for me, um, the assistant director um, is, a t is a teammate. It's someone to look at and say, I have this idea. Is it working? Is it not working? Because when you are the director, you get so involved and you're in it so much that you lose the third eye. You, mm. you, sometimes it's hard to step back and go, that's not really working there. And what's great with the assistant director is you can say, was that working? Is that not working? Or how we're working? And also, can you give me some feedback here or or with Collier I just say please offer up your feedback or your suggestions um, so so that's how it works th this way and uh, for a lot of people um, a lot of people who are getting graduate degrees in directing and so on um, intern and use it as a training ground it's a way to be trained by professional directors and some professional directors just let you sit there and watch them and some of them will ask you for their input mm -hmm. your input and actually train you so um, I've been an assistant director and it, it, it it's taught me a lot it's been very useful and I'm glad that I, I I've assistant directed after I've directed mm -hmm. and it's always useful I think to go back and forth you never stop learning do you no, no. no. Let, let's talk about the memory of water oh. this is such a brilliant play by a British playwright mm -hmm. Sheila Stevenson and uh, I think I'm going to let you talk a little bit about the storyline because it's also very close and very mm -hmm. similar to your life, which mm -hmm. is very interesting. Mm -hmm. So, uh, well, I'll talk about how I found the play yeah, and then do. move into that. Uh, my mentor from undergrad, who's still a good friend, a woman named Joy Cobb, had directed this play at my undergrad after I had left. And after my mother, I'm the youngest of three sisters, and the play is about three sisters whose mother passes away. And my mother passed away, and when she did, Joy said, you need to read this play called The Memory of Water. And so I did, and it, it immediately connected with the themes of coming to terms, I think the play for the women is about coming to terms, particularly Mary, your character, mm -hmm. with the mistakes that your parents make out of love for you to succeed if that's the best way I can put it, which is certainly things that I I came to understand and deal with in my mother's illness and when she passed. Is my mother was a wonderful mother, and she made enormous mistakes in her parenting, but or what some people might say are enormous mistakes, but I still became a successful person and a confident person and a person who I think, who tries to offer something to this world. And, um, and I have my flaws like anyone but I don't I don't look back at my mother and I don't feel angry with her at all even for some of the some of the things that maybe she shouldn't have done and I think in this play Vi the mother character we find out that she did something that could really be seen as that's a horrible thing to have done to your child but the reason she made that decision ends up making Mary your character a very successful person in the world and so really the play is about Mary coming to terms with who her mother was and and forgiving her and also receiving forgiveness from her mother. And I think that everybody is going to connect to this play. Yeah. Because we all put our parents on this pedestal and then as we mm -hmm. get older realize that, oh gosh, they're really human too. And then coming to terms with the fact that they're mm -hmm. human and they make mistakes. Mm. It's gonna be yeah. a that's it's a big journey for that character. Mm. Yeah. yeah. What do you think, no. Collier? What, what is your opinion about this play? I mean, I know that Laura is very attached to it mm. from a personal sense yeah, yeah. and could probably teach us all a lesson in, in what our characters are going through. So from your standpoint, how do you see it? It is gorgeously written. I mean, the, the playwright is so specific with her language choice that builds some of the most gorgeous 
visual metaphors that I've seen in a long time in actual the writing of the script. The language is just stunning and that's the part that I keep going back to. I think being able to assist and direct with Laura is lovely because she is very detail oriented and can see very specific moments on stage where I get to sit back and look at this whole big picture and see wow, how are these moments all connecting? What is the big arc that we're telling through this? That is such a lovely dynamic that we get to kind of play with. And Sheila, the playwright, just does a gorgeous job writing the moments for you all to play on stage. And the way she uses words, oh. it's, it's like Shakespeare. I've said it that is. in rehearsal, that she chose this specific word for this very particular moment, for, and most great playwrights do. But to me, she has a, a classical Shakespearean quality to and the it. the cadence to her language, yeah. the musicality of it, it's just gorgeous. And then to hear you all, I mean, the three sisters have such very specific characters about them that I think what you were saying earlier, everyone will be able to connect with it. Yeah. Everyone can find a bit of themselves in their coping mechanisms and their strategies for connection and, yeah. and all those elements. And it's Sheila, she's written. It's so it's real. It's so real and so rich. So and yet there's yeah. these gorgeous metaphors Ugh. and beautiful symbolism. And I, I really hope, I really hope people will come to see it more than once. Yeah because so there's so many layers in the script, especially mm. if you are a literary person, I think you will want to come see it more yeah. than once. Too. That would be great. Mm -hmm. I love performing for people more than once. I like yeah. them to see how moments can change based on how someone delivers a line yeah. that oh, shouldn't be robotic and, yeah. Yeah. you know. The organic that it's, nature. Yeah, the truth of it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love the, the, what I love about this play is the brilliance of the humor mm. because it's, it takes place in the night before their mother's funeral yeah. mm -hmm. that is not a funny time no. or is it you know there's that is sometimes the way that we get through things mm -hmm. and the the humor is so biting and so hysterical <laughs> that I'm sure people are gonna find themselves feeling awkward about laughing at certain things yeah. but you can't help it because yeah. it's just so brilliantly written mm -hmm. just love her yeah it's a good human piece it's a very good human piece yeah well I, I would love for our viewers to come and see it more than once. <laughs> come, come, come. Uh, but I'm so glad you guys were able to come on. Our time is almost up, but you awesome. just represented that so beautifully. God. And um, and I wish you all the luck with your MFA. And maybe we'll have you on a little later to talk about what you had to do with with that. Because mm -hmm. how, how how many years was it? was that a year or three two, years? Three, three years. years. Three years of three years. Yeah. blood, sweat, and tears. Yes. And, re and real quick. Um, oh, yes. Why don't we talk about how people can get tickets, websites, great. and what's going on there right now? You can go to www.livearts.org um, to get tickets. You can also stop by the box office during the week, and Daryl, oh, wonderful Daryl, will be there. there. Yeah. He's always there. He'll be there to help you. Also, February 11th, which is just next week, mm -hmm. I think, uh, The Giver opens, uh, which is directed by Will Rucker, who co-directed 13 with me, and it's uh, based on the Pulitzer Prize winning book. Ah, by Lois the, Lowry. Yes, by Lois Beautiful. Lowry. Beautiful. Yeah. The Giver. Um, so if people, um, people should go see The Giver, and while they're there, pick up their tickets for Memory of Water. Hello. That sounds There you go. That's on <laughs> I'm Schedule here. it in. All right, great. And any other information you want to share with our viewers before we sign off and move to our musical guest? I think we're good. Yeah. Thanks yeah. for having us. You were so awesome. Much. Thanks for coming great. to You guys show. are amazing in the show. Yes. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Treat. Sorry we didn't get to talk about the mask work. We'll have to talk about it in rehearsal. Comedia. I know. I love that. We'll just have to have you on again. I'm doing a workshop at Live Arts in April, so I'll come on before then. Oh, oh that's yeah. good. Right. I'll, I'll, I think I might have to sign up for that. Okay. Excellent. Okay. You heard it here first. The Memory of Water at Live Arts Director and Assistant Director. So go buy your tickets. Anyway, stay tuned. We've got Devin Sprawl and Paul Curary coming on to rock this room. You're going to like it. Stay tuned. <laughs>